did you first meet Mr. Span? Around 2001 or 2 or something like that. How did you meet him? A friend of mine's car got stolen. His brother's car got stolen and we contacted Labar Span to find out if he knew anything about it. So a friend of yours, brother? Yes. Car got stolen? Yes. Who is your friend? Mario Young. Your Honor, if I could have the government computer, and this is already in evidence. Mr. Nunnery, I've showed you what's marked as Government Exhibit 141. Do you see that person? Yes. Who is that? Mario Young. How did you know Mr. Young? I met him like maybe... I met him in the early 90s. And did you associate Mr. Young with a gang? Yes. Which gang? He was an unknown vice lord also. Same as you? Yeah. Do you know if Mr. Young had a nickname? Rio. Was that what you called him? Yes. And Mr. Young, is the person you were with whose brother's car got stolen? Yes. So were you with Rio when this happened? Yes. Where were you? We was just riding around. On the west side? Yes. Was there anyone else with you? Not that I can recall. And if you recall, how did you learn about Rio's brother's car getting stolen? His brother called and told him that somebody had just took the car. Rio's brother called? Yes. Did he call you or did he call Rio? He called Rio. And what did you and Rio do? Rio started making phone calls to try to find out who might have taken the car. What did you do next? Once we contacted Labar Span, he told Rio to let him check into it to see if some of his guys might have took the car. And what happened next? He called us back and told us that he knew who had the car and he'll get the car back. Did you reach out to Mr. Span or did Rio? No, Rio. And what did you do next? Once he told us that he had the car on his block, we went and met him to get the car back. You said on his block? Yeah. Whose block? Span, Labar Span block. And where was Mr. Span's block? Lexington and Karlov. And did y'all go over there? Yes. What happened when you got there? When we got there, the car was there. We got out the, the van and Rio talked to Labar. Did you get out of the car as well? Yeah. We've been talking about this car that Rio's brother had stolen. What kind of car was it? A Grand National. Do you remember the color? Black. Do you remember the year? 87. Did Rio and Mr. Span have a conversation? Yes. Did you participate? No. Did Rio or his brother get the car back? Yes. Was the car there at Lexington and Karlov, if you recall? Yes. And so that's the first time you met Mr. Span? Yes. Is it fair to say, though, you didn't have a substantive interaction with Mr. Span? Nah, not that time. Did you later have a substantive interaction with Mr. Span? Yes. And when was that? 
in 2003. Do you remember where that occurred? On 15th and Christiana. And you mentioned that as a place where you sold drugs? Yes. Who was present for this conversation or interaction between you and Mr. Span? A friend of mine named Nut, Labar, Fufop, and Pierre. So you said in addition to you and Mr. Span, there were three other people? Yeah. Nut, Fufop, and Pierre? Yeah. Okay, let's start with Nut. Who is Nut? Nut was one of my friends. Do you know his real name? Jeremy, I can't remember his last name. Did he work for you? Yes. What did he do? He ran the drug operation on 15th and Christiana. So was he your manager? Yes. You mentioned Fufop. Yes. The government computer again. Sorry, Mr. Nunnery. Mr. Nunnery, I've put up on the screen what's marked as Government Exhibit 112, which is already in evidence. Do you recognize that person? Yes. Who is that? That's Fufop, Darius Franklin. That's his real name? Yeah. Did you associate Mr. Franklin with a street gang? Yes. Which one? Undertaker Vice Lords. So you're an unknown Vice Lord? Yeah. Rio's an unknown Vice Lord? Yes. But Mr. Franklin is an Undertaker Vice Lord? Yes. All Vice Lords? Yes. Did you associate Mr. Franklin with Mr. Span? Yes. Did you see them together? Yes. How often? Quite often. You also mentioned a person by the name of Pierre? Yes. Mr. Nunnery, I put on the screen what's marked as Government Exhibit 106. Do you recognize that person? Yes. And who is that? Pierre. Now, is that his real name? No. Do you know his real name? I know his real name is Jasper. Do you know his last name? Nah. Do you know if he had any other nicknames? Yeah. Postman. Did you associate Pierre with a gang? Yes. Which gang? Four Corner Hustlers. Did you associate him with Mr. Span? Yes. Would you see Pierre with Mr. Span? Yes. How often? Every time I saw Mr. Span, Pierre was with him. So let's get back to this conversation on 15th and Christiana. It's you, Mr. Span, Fufop, Pierre, and Nut. And what, if anything, was discussed? We talked about me providing drugs for Labar Span and Pierre in Leclerc Courts. And where, and what are the Leclerc Courts? Leclerc Courts is some housing projects on the south side, southwest side. And you had a conversation about you supplying the drugs there? Yes. What types of drugs were you going to provide? Heroin. And what was going to be the arrangement? I was basically fronting them the drugs and I would get a percentage, and they would get a percentage. What does that mean, to front the drugs? To give them the drugs on consignment. And then, would they pay you whatever they made from the drugs? 
Yes. Did you begin to discuss how much drugs you were going to provide Mr. Spann and Pierre at Leclerc Courts? Not, not a, an amount necessarily, but you know, just something to start up with. Yeah. And did you start supplying drugs to Pierre and Mr. Spann? Yes. Do you recall how much you first provided to them? A few grams in total. It was maybe 10 to 20 grams in total. How long did this arrangement of you providing drugs to Mr. Spann and Pierre last? Only maybe a couple of weeks. Did you have another conversation with Mr. Spann and Pierre about drugs? Yes. How long after the first conversation was the second conversation, if you know? I can't recall, but maybe days. And was this also at 15th and Christiana or another location? No, at another location. Where was this conversation? The parking lot of a strip mall on Spalding. I mean, on Roosevelt and Spalding. Yeah. Do you recall who was present? Yeah, I know it was Pierre and Labar. Fufop might have been there. The initial, but I can't recall. And what was discussed in this second conversation? We discussed me supplying the drugs and, you know, how it was going or whatever. How was the arrangement going? It was moving slow. What do you mean by that? The, the drugs wasn't being sold fast enough. Did you then continue to provide drugs to Mr. Spann and Pierre after that? No, no. Whose decision was it to stop supplying drugs? Me. Did you advise Mr. Spann and Pierre that you were going to stop supplying drugs to them in Leclerc Courts? Yeah, we talked about it. I told them it was too slow. And what was their response? He was telling me that he had some more blocks that I might be able to, to work. Did you talk about different blocks? Yeah. What other blocks did you talk about? Lexington and Carla, Lexington and Pulaski. Did you ever provide drugs to Mr. Spann to be sold on those blocks? No. Why didn't it happen? Because the arrangement didn't work out in Leclerc Courts. So you had discussions about supplying drugs to additional blocks for Mr. Spann, but because the Leclerc Courts arrangement didn't work, these other arrangements did not come to fruition? Exactly. Now, Mr. Nunnery, I want to ask you about another conversation you had with Mr. Spann about robbing some jewelry. Do you recall this conversation? Yes. And when did this one occur, if you know? Maybe our second or third conversation, maybe fourth. And you had said earlier you're here to testify about the murder of a person named Rudy Rangel? Yes. Did this conversation about robbing jewelry come before Rudy Rangel was murdered? Yes. And where did this conversation take place? At the strip mall. The one you mentioned earlier? Yes. Spalding and Roosevelt? Yes. Did you meet there often? Yes, when it was convenient, or at an apartment that I had on Laramie and Maple. Did you live... Was the Spalding and Roosevelt strip mall close to your address? I had an apartment on Spalding right down the street. Okay, so you had an apartment on Spalding? Yes. 
that was near the strip mall? Exactly. And then you had another apartment. Where was the second one? On Laramie and Maple. What were some of the stores at the strip mall at Spalding and Roosevelt, if you recall? I know there was a Dominic's, Hollywood Video, Freshwear, and there was a movie theater. That's all I could remember. Now, Mr. Nunnery, who was present for this meeting at Spalding and Roosevelt where you talked about robbing some jewelry? Fufa, Pierre, and Labar? And what was discussed, if you recall? Labar asked me if I might be interested in buying a chain, and he described the chain to me. How did he describe the chain? He told me it was it was a chain with a square medallion with diamonds in it, and he told me that he knew a Puerto Rican guy that had it, but once he described the chain to me and told me where the guy where he had seen the guy, I recognized the the chain and I knew the person that he was talking about. Where did Mr. Spann say he saw the person with the chain? At the car wash on Roosevelt in Sacramento. Did Mr. Spann tell you the name of the person who wore the chain? Nah, he didn't know the name. Mr. Spann didn't know the name? Nah. But you, based on your conversation, knew who he was referring to? Yes. Who did you believe Mr. Spann was referring to? Cato. Did Mr. Spann say how he was going to get it? He said he was going to rob him, take it. So why would Mr. Spann be telling you about jewelry? Because he knew that I wore jewelry and bought jewelry. You bought jewelry? Yes. So you said you knew Mr. Spann was referring to Cato? Yes. Who was Cato? The leader of the Latin Kings. You said he was a leader? Yes. And did you know him to wear expensive jewelry? Yes. Had you seen him wearing expensive jewelry? Yes. So how did you leave this conversation with Mr. Spann regarding you buying jewelry? Yeah, I told him if he get it, that I'll buy it. Now, after that conversation, did you learn about a contract on Cato's life? Yes. How long after the conversation with Mr. Spann did you learn about the contract on Cato's life? Not long at all. How did you learn about the contract on Cato's life? A friend, another friend named Frederick Bell called me. Who is Frederick Bell? He was a guy that I've been knowing since like 94 maybe. Was Mr. Bell in a gang? Yes. Which gang? conservative vice lords and did you have a relationship with Mr. Bell meaning drug dealing or other illegal matters yes and so you said you learned from Mr. Bell about the contract on Cato's life yes did you have a conversation with him yes was it in person or over the phone in person where did you meet? At North Riverside Mall. Was there anyone else present? No, just me and Fred. And what did Mr. Bell tell you? He told me that some Latin kings, some more Latin kings, two brothers, had a contract out on Cato to be killed and asked me did I know anybody that might be able to take care of it for him. So Mr. Bell told you that some Latin kings who were brothers, yeah, had a contract on Cato? Yes. Did he say who the brothers were? Yes, the twins, Peter, not Peter, 
Pedro and Margarito Flores. Did you know who they were? Yeah. Who were they? They were two known drug dealers. Were they members of the Latin Kings as well? Yes, to my knowledge. Would you say you had a close relationship with the twins or did you just know of them? No, I just knew of them. And people referred to them as the twins? Yes. Do you know if they were twins? I don't know if they were. They kind of looked alike. Yeah. And Mr. Bell told you this related to some drugs? Yes. Meaning the reason why someone, the twins, wanted Cato killed was in relation to drugs? Yes. What did Mr. Bell say? Mr. Bell said that Cato took 300 keys of cocaine from the twins and that they were willing to pay someone 200000 to kill him. <laughs>